But yeah, that was like my only boyfriend. Really? And I have like 50 songs about him, but <gasps> he will never know. Really? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. wait, so you wrote 50 songs about him, but he's I mean, never gonna know how? No, because he doesn't speak Spanish. Uh, oh. That actually, <laughs> <laughs> he was. He was Tell me about your day. How have you been? I've been good. I woke up this morning and I thought I was going to be late, to be honest. Oh, why? But because I was in the studio last night and I, we left like at 2 a.m. So <gasps> What were you working on? I was actually in Juval's session. I don't know if you know Juval. Mm -hmm. He's another artist, trap, rap, um, dembo. He was actually making a dembo last night. Ooh. Yeah, and I was like there listening and then I realized that it was late and that I had an interview the, like the next day, yeah. so I left. Tell me about your musical journey up until today. Okay. So I started making music when I was like six. I joined the, um, an orchestra in Venezuela. I'm from Venezuela. Yeah. And I joined the orchestra. What do you play? You play, you play instruments? Yeah. I play, well, at the beginning, the first two years, I think it was just the first year, I had to learn the recorder and then for the next five, six years I play the flute. So basically the whole beginning for my musical journey was classical music, like Beethoven, Mozart, yeah. And then we moved, like my whole family, we moved to Trinidad and Tobago and I still wanted to like keep playing. So my mom found a whole, another orchestra for us to keep playing. My sister, she plays the violin too. Oh wow. Yeah. So how does your, um your beginning roots of like that classical music influence your current music? I would say more than anything, harmonies. Because like being an or in an orchestra, you get to listen to so many different instruments y que tienen diferentes tonos. It's like, like all of them together, they make like some crazy harmonies that you could not even imagine. And you, when you are in the orchestra, you don't really understand them. But when you you're dissect. yes, yeah. and like I feel like I take lo que yo aprendí en, en mis años en la orquesta. I feel like I take it y lo pongo en mi música más que todo en my harmonies and sometimes in some melodies. Not all the time though, but yeah. Y es diferente cuando te entrenas o tienes ese conocimiento de poder entender la música de ese aspecto. Yeah. O sea, puedes escuchar diferente música, Exacto. diferentes instrumentos y decir yo sé lo que está haciendo este instrumento. Yeah. Yo sé lo que está haciendo. L literally, yeah. es como que mis oídos ya están trained to do it, yeah. you know, to hear it. So that's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Uh -huh. um, so, what is your favorite part about being an artist? I love music. I love music so much. What does it do for you? I, don't, it, I think it makes me, like when I'm, when I'm recording, right, and I finish this song, I think that's the best part of being an artist, like listening to what you know you can make, like just listening to it, what it do, makes... What do you feel when you listen es como to it que, it's done? When it's completely done and you're it like, makes, it's like, that's it. I don't know how to explain it, it's like, it makes me so happy, it makes me feel free. It's like, it's, it surprised myself, I surprise myself when I make music, porque es como que I cannot believe I just made that. You know, and that makes me so proud and so happy. And it's like, I feel like that's why I made music. Kind of. Yeah. I don't know. It's como que me hace sentir super bien. Yeah. It's hard to explain, to be honest. Let's talk about your recent collaborations. Who have you collaborated with thus far? Well, my last collaboration was Abel. You know Abel, right? Yeah, hicimos dos canciones when he was here, because he lives in LA now. Mm -hmm. And that was my last collaboration, but I also have songs with Juval, Chava, because mm -hmm. she's learning to produce right now. And we literally look, ¿cómo se dice? Nos encerramos en el estudio. Yeah. <laughs> como for like three months, four months, and we made like 10 songs, kind of, 10, 10 15 songs. And we're actually going to release una canción together this, this year. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Very excited about it. Yeah. So, you said you chose Chicago for music. Why? I didn't really choose it. Um, when we moved to Trin, I mean, when we were planning to move to leave Trinidad, we were actually going to Canada. We were not supposed to be here in the United States. 
You oh. and you and your family or just you? No, my whole family, yeah. And cuando llegamos a Canadá, it was still during the la pandemia. Entonces, llegamos allá y de, nos dijeron como que miren, no pueden estar aquí, you guys have to go, pero pueden volver cuando la pandemia pase. And then like we had to pick up everything again and leave and we had like no plan, we were in like zero again. We didn't know what to do. Yeah. And I remember us like in a hotel room and my mom crying. Yeah, because it's like you change everything. Entonces, mi mamá como que encerró, se encerró un solo día, como que a pensar qué vamos a hacer. You know, it's like a five people family, you know? Two kids, un teenager, my dad, it's like a lot of people. And she's basically the one who takes the decision, which just help her, yeah. kind of. Y bueno, entonces, um, nos mudamos a Chicago porque she had una sobrina aquí. Y la sobrina nos ayudó, estuvimos en su casa, hasta que ya mis padres tuvieron las posibilidades to move somewhere else. Yeah. yeah. So you talked about your journey um, from Venezuela, right? Um, you said you grew up there, right? Yeah. When did you learn English? Um, me mudé. When I was 13, I moved, we home, we, my, like, my whole family. We moved to Trinidad and Tobago, and we lived there for almost four years but I didn't know English at all. Like the only thing I knew how to say was, hello, how are you? My name is Diana. Thank you, that's, that's <laughs> yeah. it. And then I moved, we moved to Trinidad and Tobago and after two weeks I was already in high school and I had to like talk to my professors and I was literally the only one in the whole school who spoke Spanish. Wow. So it was hard. It's a transition, yeah. Yeah, it was really hard to yeah. be honest. I had no friends and like even in, in lunch time or break time, um, I would just sit by myself. I need my food by myself. I cry. Aww. Yeah, because you know it's. I mean, I didn't want to leave my country, so Why I. Did you leave your country? Um, my whole family and I. We were kidnapped in Venezuela, and you know, again, my parents. They were taking care of two little girls, so they were like, "We gotta go." Yeah, you know, it must have been really hard. Yeah, you and your family. Yeah, so we left. And of course, we didn't want to leave, but we left yeah. and we went to this whole, I mean, another country with another language and a bunch of new people, so. Yeah, so what was that? I don't want to ask how was that experience for you, but what was that transition of having to move and being in Canada and seeing your mom cry and like having to deal with these like really hard life decisions that, you know, they're sacrifices. Um, what was that transition like? At the beginning, creo que en el momento I didn't really understand it like I do right now. Porque mis padres cuando estaban en Venezuela, ellos ya tenían like their own business going on. They had like their own house. They, they were literally settled down. Cause you know, like you've been building your life in your own country for a whole life and then poof, you have to leave and just leave everything to me at the beginning I was like okay they could just build it again but, you know I was young and I didn't know any better and then we moved and I realized when we moved to Trinidad I realized that it wasn't that easy okay it's a whole process and my dad like my mom she got there without with a job but my dad he had like 10 different jobs in a year you know and I thought it just wasn't what I thought. I thought it was going to be easier, but you know, I wasn't the one fighting for it. So, yeah. yeah. How does it make you feel knowing that your parents had to sacrifice all that? I'm part of them, to be honest. Creo que ellos han hecho todo lo que han hecho por nosotros, por mí, mi hermana, mi hermano. Um, y the fact that ellos lucharon todo eso desde Venezuela, Trinidad, Canadá, y después llegar aquí y todavía seguir con su vida y luchar por lo que ellos quieren para tener una estabilidad económica mejor, para cumplir lo que ellos quieran en la vida, pues eso, I'm, I'm proud of them y yo creo que eso es un super ejemplo que ellos nos han dado a nosotros. Yeah. What, a, what ha, of that transition, what has been the hardest part for you? Trinidad. Yeah. What was your life like in Trinidad? Um, well, you know, at the moment when we moved to Trinidad, um, they didn't really have like the best 
perspective for Venezuelan, for the Venezuelan community. So we How were. So? Era como que en el momento Venezuela no estaba tan mal y no habían tantos venezolanos. ¿Tan mal dentro de qué aspecto? Económicamente, um, en, safe, en ¿cómo se dice? seguridad, uh -huh. you know, like, el, ahorita está súper mal, la verdad. Pero en ese momento, it was even worse. Uh -huh. Like, a lot of people was leaving the country, they were going to Europe, um, United States, I mean, they're coming out, but... Um, so, when we moved, todavía eso no estaba tan mal y los venezolanos que estaban yendo a Trinidad eran como que estaban haciendo cosas malas, iban para hacer cosas malas. ¿Cómo o sea, cosas malas? Cosas ilegales, como iban para buscar drogas y vender drogas en Venezuela o iban para vender drogas en Trinidad y ellos como que, yo creo que ellos tenían esa per per perspectiva, en los trinitarios tenían esa perspectiva hacia el venezolano y eso como que por lo menos cuando yo andaba por la calle nos decían cosas feas. ¿Qué les decían? Cosas como que devuélvanse a su país, ustedes no están haciendo nada aquí, o a veces creían que yo, como mujer, creían que yo estaba en Trinidad por prostitución. And I, I wasn't, you know. I wasn't. So, I was a minor, also. Pero creo que ellos tenían esa perspectiva y a veces estábamos por la calle. Por lo menos una vez salí con mi mamá y una amiga de mi mamá y estábamos caminando por la calle y de repente volteamos porque había una persona pintando el carro y volteamos y el señor was literally touching himself y nos enseñó you know like it was like those kind of um, experiences you were objectified because of where you come from yeah because of what they think we were doing there and we were not doing that yeah you know So, era como que cada vez, everywhere we were going, no importa dónde, así sea el banco, el centro comercial, in school. Like, sometimes I would raise my hand in school and they, like, they would just ignore me because they thought I was, like, trying, I don't know. How did that make you feel? How did that change you? I think I was strong at the moment, to be honest. Creo que era como que más fuerte en el momento porque era como que I can't change it. I have to graduate and then leave. That was, like, my mindset at the moment. But now that I'm here, it's like, I don't know how I did it, to be honest. It was hard. It was really hard. My parents, they wouldn't, like, let us go anywhere because they were scared something would happen to us. So I didn't really, ha I didn't really get to, like, go out with my friends like that or kind of, like, have a normal life. Yeah, because that was taken from me. Yeah. And besides, because of the kidnapping thing, my parents were also scared. Paranoid. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it was like a lot of things going on in the same moment and maybe in the wrong place, maybe in the right place. Like, I will never know at this point. Yeah. So. so, you know, those are all experiences that make you a stronger person and make you who you are today. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like it's inevitable for you to carry that with, for to not carry it with you. Um, how does that affect you today here in Chicago? I mean, being in Trinidad, it helped me to learn English. <laughs> so I guess it made it easier for me, kind of, in that sense. Um, but being here, I feel more free. I feel like I, I could do anything, go anywhere. So I'm, that's why I love, maybe that's why I love the city. Because like after all that, it's like, I love it here. Yeah. What do you love most about your life here? The fact that I get to make music, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Like I did. Like when I got when I got here, I didn't think I was gonna do it. Like I'm doing it right now. I thought it was gonna be me in my room recording myself because that's how I started. I mean, that's how everyone starts. Um, and I thought it was gonna be like that for years, but I think I've been doing some improvement, like with my team, my brother. Yeah. It's been good. Yeah. I love Chicago, to be honest. It has given me so many opportunities. And guess what? Chicago loves you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm so happy and so proud of all of your accomplishments. What do you think, what do you see for yourself in the future as an artist and in your personal life? I want to be involved in, in otros proyectos de otros artistas. No solo como que develop my own project. I want to develop my own project, pero también quiero trabajar en proyectos de otros artistas. Like who? Like... I don't know, upcoming artists. Like, at the beginning, 
I was basically by myself, you know? So I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how it worked. I didn't know how the industry worked until I got here. What has been your biggest surprise about how the industry, the industry works? It's kind of mean. It's mean? Yeah, a little Why? bit. Why? I mean, not, not, it hasn't been mean to me. Stop being mean to her. <laughs> <laughs> no, it hasn't been mean to me, pero being around other artists and listening to their experiences, it's like, wow, I'm lucky. Yeah. I'm really lucky, especially for um, mis amigas que son artistas and they're females and they're doing it by themselves, like trying to, wow, it's like, like when they tell me their stories, like, you know, so yeah. I feel like, I feel I'm very lucky that I have my team with me and they, they ha that they have been helping me and defending me. So I'm very grateful for them. Yeah. Um, how do you, well, you were talking about earlier feeling objectified because of people's per wrong perception of who you are. Have you seen any of that in the music industry? No, no como que en mi personalidad como tal, creo que no sé si es el lugar, no sé si es la industria. Creo que la industria de la música es un poco, it's very open-minded, porque estamos haciendo arte todos. Right. So, like, I, I personally believe that if you're gonna do art, you have to be open-minded. Like, you don't yeah. really have any choice. Yeah. Pero sí me ha pasado que como que les digo como que sí, soy venezolana y hago música and people think that I make reggaeton. And I do make it, but that's not like my main style, yeah. you know? But that's the only thing. What image do you want to stay away from? Or how, you just said like, people assume that, you know, I make reggaeton because I am from Venezuela. Is there anything else that you would like, like people to know that is not your truth or is not their perception of who you are? I've been, as I said, I've been making music since I have memory, basically. Y he studied music, como que la teoría, acordes, armonías, like todo, like from zero to, I don't know what number, because I haven't finished it. Yeah. You know, I'm actually going to college for music right now. Y todavía aprendo, y aprendo cada vez más. Entonces, sí, sí, sí quiero que la gente vea que no soy un artista que nada más como que se mete en el booth y escribe y canta, sino que quiero que sepan que también tengo ese background de que se theory and I, that I'm, I know what I'm doing, you know? Look at you. That's, I, yeah. <laughs> there's talent behind you. And yeah, it's not, it's not just talent, it's time and effort. Yeah, yeah, I respect that. Tell me about your production. Who mainly works with you for your sound? Um, I started working with my brother. Um, at the beginning, I would record my voices in my room. It wasn't even like a good microphone, but that was like the only thing the I only had. Thing you had yeah. yeah. So I would just record it in my room like at 1 a.m. Um, and then I would send that to my brother because I was living in Trinidad and he was living in Venezuela. So I would send it to him. And because the internet wasn't good there, he would take like a whole week to download it. What? Yeah. A whole week? Yeah, and then take a whole, another another week to just send it. So it would, it would be like a long process. It was worthy though. And that's how he also learned how to mix. He was learning how to produce. So, so just, that's who you mainly work with? Yeah, my brother. He's my producer, Ground mm. Andres. Mm. Yeah. Dope. But so. I also have this other, I work with other producer, his name is Jules. Mm -hmm. And most of the things that I do that are like my own sound is my brother, but the new things that I try, I do it with Jules. Hmm. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Actually, Jules, he was the one who told me how to sound, right? Really? I, I wasn't that good at the beginning. <laughs> I'm sure honest. you were. Um, so like about your sound, how did you figure out your sound? It took me a while. Do you, um, do you think you're still trying to find your sound? I think I think you never stop trying to find it, to be honest. Really? Yeah. Because um, there are always new things to try. Yeah. So you have. I feel like you have to find your own sound in every single style. Yeah. You know, to yeah. actually know your sound. Yeah. Who's your biggest musical influence? Ariana Grande. Really? Yeah. By far. I love her. I, I love her I love so her. much too. Yeah. Like she's a great vocalist. She's like amazing singer. Yeah. And her harmonies, ad libs. 
she's amazing. She's dope. I like yeah, her. She is. I mean, she's a little controversial right now, but we're not gonna talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's. Um. So, can I ask you something? Mm-hmm. Do you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend? I don't. You don't? No, I don't. Why? I haven't dated anyone since we got here in Chicago. Really? Mm-hmm. I think I've been so focused on my music that I don't really go out like that. And when I go out, I do it with my friends. Um, they they have been dating guys and everything, but I, I don't. I just I don't know. I feel like it's gonna take so much time from what I really wanna do. Right. So no, I guess. I don't have. A but like sometimes you just like need to get out there a little bit, you know? Maybe. What's your type? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, dark skin, tall. Like how tall? Like, kind of like, just a little bit taller than me. Really? Yeah, definitely no, not not shorter than me. Well, no. No. <laughs> but, How yeah. tall are you? Um, I don't even know, five, six? Okay. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. Actually, I had a boyfriend in Trinidad. Really? Yeah, and I realized with him that he was my type. Really? Yeah, they're asking and tall. Aww. Yeah. You don't talk to him anymore? No. Oh, what happened? A lot of things. What happened? <laughs> it's a long story. Really? Yeah, a we very long story. <laughs> um, well... Oh, it's a... Okay. My mom, my mom never liked him. Ooh, and we were like that's always... That's the first red yeah. flag. If my, if, your mom, if my mom doesn't like you, I, I shouldn't no, yeah. like you. But, yeah. My mom doesn't like anybody, to be honest. Oh, really? Yeah. But him, she hated him. Really? Yeah. Why? Um, she thought he was trouble to me. That he was gonna like bad influence me or something. Really? Yeah. You he, like would, bad he did though. <laughs> but, yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, he was he wasn't good. No? No. You deserve better. Yeah. But he didn't know that. No? Mm-hmm. But do you know that? Yeah, I do. Okay. <laughs> I mean I do now. Yeah. When you're in the moment you're just like, this is okay, and you're like, wait, and then it's not until after you break up, you're like, wait, this is bad. <laughs> It's just toxic. Yeah. And you're like, no, I mean, I knew it. I knew it wasn't good when I was with him, but I, I really liked it. Yeah. I just. Yeah, sometimes you're willing to sacrifice the toxicity for love. No, it wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth no? it. No? No. I should have left him. But, anyways, yeah. Well, he's. Is he still. In Trinidad? Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. He could stay there. Yeah. <laughs> he's not. He's not gonna leave. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, that was like my only boyfriend. Really? And I have like 50 songs about him, but he will never know. Really? Yeah. Like, (laughs) wait, so you wrote 50 songs about him, but he's never gonna know how? No, because he doesn't speak Spanish. Uh, Oh. That actually, (laughs) (laughs) he was, he he actually helped me a lot to like learn English. Inspire? No, learn English when I was there. Yeah. But he, I mean, he he clearly inspired your music, so that's a good positive thing. Yeah. 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 So tell me about your latest song. Um, okay, so my last song, I released it two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. It's called Yo Me Guardo. Mm, what's that about? Um, it's about basically me saying like, I'm not gonna go to parties, I'm not gonna go out, just Why? for you. Why? Just for you, because like, I could stay with you at night and just watch Netflix, Girl. you know? Like something. <laughs> Leave me alone, I'm trying. I need a boyfriend. You need a boyfriend? Yeah. Why? I don't know. This would be a cute date with a boyfriend, right? Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah, all my dates here have been with my friends. Not, well, not like the, with the one like the one I told you I've been like yeah. that was two weeks ago. Yeah, that was with my friend. Actually it was with Bella. You know uh, do you know who she mm-hmm. is? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she had a performance here in Navy Pier. Oh cute. Yeah. And we came in here together. Yeah, no, this is like, this is a cute vibe for a date. Yeah, it is. Once we have boyfriends, we should come Once. here together. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, but... No, but you... How could you come here to Navy Pier? Do you think it is one of that? Maybe with him. <laughs> I could take myself in here. <laughs> Con él. You know? <laughs> Do they have cameras in here? I don't know. Why? Just ask <laughs> to make, Just to make sure, you know, in the future, you never know. <laughs> it's not that kind of show. No, okay, yeah. I'm sorry. Oops. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so. Yeah, no, that song, Yo Me Guardo, um, that was produced by a. He is from Jamaica. Ooh. 
Oh. Yeah, and he like he heard my music on Instagram, and then he sent me beats like almost every week. And then I listened, I listened to all the beats he sent me all the time because I really like his work, really? especially because you know I lived in Trinidad, and yeah. it's like it's familiar not, sound. Exactly, it's not the same culture. It's actually different, pero es como que the, when it comes to Afrobeats, it's like the vibe is there. Yeah. yeah. So. So you're like. Mm, yeah. yeah. So I recorded this song and then I showed it to my brother. And mi hermano le encanta jugar con filtros y cosas así como en producción. Mm -hmm. Le encanta jugar con los filtros, con hacer esto, hacer que suene raro more than anything. And then at the end, that's my, actually my favorite part. Él tiene unos filtros como que hace que la, el, la, el sonido de la voz abra y luego cierre. And I love that. Yeah, yeah it's amazing. I, yeah. I love that song. Yeah. And I'm so happy and excited that it's out and then more people can hear it. That's awesome. So, what sets you apart from different artists right now? Like, what makes you different besides your talent, besides like your background? I would say, uh, kind of my story. I would say my story, but not just like not my story. Like, yeah, I'm from Venezuela and I'm from Trinidad and I'm here. Not just that. It's just it's my story with music that you know I was born in Venezuela but I wasn't doing like musica regional mm -hmm. or reggaeton I was doing classical music which is not regular yeah. especially for a you know una niña de seis yeah. años yeah. so and then I moved to Trinidad and I had this all these different sounds that I didn't know about mm -hmm. um, like Afrobeat, Isoka and I, I was like you know in the beach dancing to them because yeah. that's Do you like to dance I, yeah, I was a dancer. Yeah? Yeah, I was a dancer. Actually, I think I was a, I was a dancer before being a singer. Okay, what's your favorite type of music to dance to? Reggaeton. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, hip hop, reggaeton, kind of trap. Like yeah. how? And Afrobeats. Oh really? my god, yeah. No, yo bailé en Trinidad, cuando vivía en Trinidad, bailé muchísimo a Afrobeats. Really? Yeah, and I was good at it. Do so you know how to like, dance all that? Like, yeah. do you know how to dance like Spanish music? What like salsa, mean? merengue, bachata. I, I think I used to. I think I don't anymore. Like really? I said, yeah. When I when I moved to Chicago, stop dancing. Really? Yeah. There's a lot of places that have like really good dancers. Yeah. No, I. I. Yo fui a algunas academias, algunas compañías, and I had a couple of classes, but I I was more focused on. I put like all my time and all my effort on my music. Yeah. Yeah. And I literally forgot about everything else. So. Yeah. Yeah. So that's me. That's good. Yeah, but I used to do. When I was dancing, I used to do more like hip hop, reggaeton, Afrobeats, a lot of Afrobeats. And yeah, I think, creo que esa es como que mi historia en la música, como que yo tuve que pasar por a lot of, como tuve que mudarme de muchos, de países en países, como que tuve que atravesar por todos esos diferentes estilos que escuchaban en cada cultura diferente. So, Para llegar a lo que Yeah, so I think, creo que eso es lo que me diferencia a mí como artista, yeah. en mi sonido. Yeah, it's great, I love it. Um, who do you wish to collaborate in the future? Do you know who BL is? BL? He's Colombian, but he was raised in Venezuela. And I love him so much. He's married, but... <laughs> fuck. I mean, sorry. Shut him up. <laughs> <Hey>. Yeah. <laughs> if you're yeah. watching this. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> you, don't know you. you know where I live. <laughs> yeah, no. I love him. Yeah. I, como te dije, él también hace Afrobeats y reggaeton. Pero su voz, like el tono de su voz y como el flow que tiene en cada una de sus canciones, I love it and I think that if I make a song with him, it would be a hit for sure. Yeah. Like esa es como que mi, la colaboración por la que I'm más excited about. Yeah. yeah. Him. Anybody else? Um, in Spanish, um, I listen to a lot of upcoming artists more than you know major artists, mm -hmm. and especially from Venezuela. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I love Bella. I love her sound. I love her music. Um, Yarge, there's this girl called Yarge. She's from Venezuela too. Yeah, I love her sound. And this guy called Neos too. Mm. I love both of them. Yeah. But you know, upcoming artists. Yeah. yeah. Anyone big? Like anyone like super mainstream that you'd like to work with? <sighs> I think, okay. He makes army and trap more than anything. Um, I think his name is Black Six Like. Oh, I still don't know how to say his name. Oh yeah, me neither. <laughs> I know, I know. He says that he's black, but you spell it like Six Like. And I think 
and, and if I make an R&B song with him, I love every single featuring of him. I love them more than like his own songs. Yeah. So siento que si hago un featuring con él va a ser como que yeah. yeah, you know, me singing in Spanish, him singing in English. It's manifested. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Those are like the two guys I'm more excited yeah. about. Why should people listen to you? Why Am should music? why should people listen to your music? Um I think again because of my story. Yo vengo de un pueblo muy chiquito, bueno, no es un pueblo, es una ciudad, pero es una ciudad muy chiquita en Venezuela, de la que en realidad no hay muchos artistas right now, pero los que hay le están poniendo mucho esfuerzo. Entonces creo que es una ciudad en la que no se considera de la que vienen muchos artistas. So, creo que deberían escucharme porque I am un artista de esa ciudad y no tenemos muchos y es como que if I can do it, you can do it too. So, Quiero que me escuchen por inspiración para que los inspiren a ellos mismos a hacer lo que ellos quieran porque, again, I know it's not easy.